Remember, whatever discipline you're in, whether you're a musician or a photographer, a fine artist or a cartoonist, a writer, a dancer, a singer, a designer, whatever you do, you have one thing that's unique. You have the ability to make art. And for me, and for so many of the people I've known, that's been a lifesaver, the ultimate lifesaver. It gets you through good times and it gets you through the other ones. Sometimes life is hard. Things go wrong in life and in love and in business and in friendship and in health and in all the other ways that life can go wrong. And when things get tough, this is what you should do. Make good art. I'm serious. Husband runs off with a politician. Make good art. Leg crushed and then eaten by a mutated boa constrictor. Make good art. IRS on your trail. Make good art. Cat. Cat exploded. Make good art. Someone on the internet thinks what you're doing is stupid or evil or it's all been done before. Make good art. Probably things will work out somehow. And eventually time will take the sting away. And that doesn't even matter. Do what only you can do best. Make good art. Make it on the bad days. And make it on the good days too. And fifthly, while you're at it, make your art. Do the stuff that only you can do. The urge starting out is to copy. And that's not a bad thing. Most of us only find our own voices after we've sounded like a lot of other people. But the one thing that you have that nobody else has is you. Your voice, your mind, your story, your vision. So write and draw and build and play and dance and live as only you can. The moment that you feel that just possibly you're walking down the street naked, exposing too much of your heart and your mind and what exists on the inside, showing too much of yourself, that's the moment you may be starting to get it right. The things I've done that worked the best were the things I was the least certain about. The stories where I was sure they'd either work or more likely be the kind of embarrassing failures that people would gather together and discuss until the end of time. They always had that in common. Looking back at them, people explain why they were inevitable successes. And when I was doing them, I had no idea. I still don't. And where would be the fun in making something you knew was going to work? And sometimes the things I did really didn't work. There are stories of mine that have never been reprinted. Some of them never even left the house. But I learned as much from them as I did from the things that worked. Okay, sixthly, I'm going to pass on some secret freelancer knowledge. Secret knowledge is always good. And it's useful for anyone who ever plans to create art for other people to enter a freelance world of any kind. I learned it in comics, but it applies to other fields too, and it's this. People get hired because somehow they get hired. In my case, I did something which these days would be easy to check and would get me into a lot of trouble. And when I started out in those pre-internet days seemed like a sensible career strategy. When I was asked by editors who I'd written for, I lied. <laughs> I listed a handful of magazines that sounded likely, and I sounded confident, and I got jobs. 